You know what? I'm not the first person to say this, but I truly do believe that finasteride has destroyed the lives of thousands of men around the world. But why is that the case? Why is finasteride so devastating? Well, it's because finasteride has some side effects that a number of men either weren't taught about before they started taking the medication or have suffered from all these side effects in which you know they never even knew was possible. So in today's video, what I'm gonna do is actually share with you post finasteride syndrome. This is a devastating condition that occurs in a large percentage of men that use this particular drug. Now, finasteride is an FDA approved pharmacological agent for treating benign prostatic hyperplasia and androgenic alopecia or male pattern hair loss. Now, obviously finasteride has had a lot of success in a number of men to treat hair loss um, and to slow it down. And now finasteride is actually an inhibitor of 5-alpha reductase enzymes types 2 and 3, resulting in inhibition of testosterone conversion to dihydrotestosterone or DHT. DHT, as you have probably heard me say many, many times before, is much more potent than testosterone and actually exerts many psychoactive effects in the brain and can specifically really affect a man's quality of life and mental health. Finasteride by reducing DHT, particularly in the scalp, reduces the amount of binding the androgen receptors in the scalp and therefore reduces the miniaturization of hair follicles. Now, research has shown that finasteride reduces prostatic DHT levels by upwards of 90% and serum DHT levels by 70%. So we can see here uh, that testosterone naturally gets converted into dihydrotestosterone via 5-alpha reductase type 2 and finasteride comes in and blocks that the activity of that enzyme which can have devastating side effects and consequences in which I'll share with you guys shortly. So why are men using finasteride? Well, finasteride also known as Propecia is the most common medication used by men to prevent hair loss as well as an enlarged prostate. Now, as men age, male pattern baldness is an inevitable reality faced sooner, than, sooner or later depending upon genetic health and environmental factors. Now, for many males, this hair loss brings great, can bring on you know, a great amount of fear and anxiety and also diminish their level of confidence. Share a comment down below if you have suffered from hair loss. Have you used finasteride? What has your experience been? Drop a comment down below. Let's get a discussion going on this extremely controversial topic. So therefore, they turn to medical interventions with finasteride being the most consistent and reliable preventative measure for combating the balding process. Um, so the success rate with finasteride is quite high, um, although DHT, the conversion of testosterone to DHT, is not the only driver of hair loss. There are many other hormones, nutrient deficiencies, and other inflammatory mediators that actually regulate hair loss um, that finasteride does not target. It only targets one pathway, which is testosterone's conversion into DHT. So now you're wondering like a little bit more about how finasteride works for hair loss. Well, DHT is a hormone metabolite of testosterone that binds the androgen receptor with greater affinity than testosterone, thus having greater androgenic effects. Now it is synthesized from testosterone via the 5-alpha reductase enzymes, which comes in types 1, 2, and 3 that are differentially expressed in the body. Now, DHT has a profound role in binding the androgen receptor in hair follicles, which leads to miniaturization and results in hair loss from the scalp. Now, finasteride selectively inhibits this type 2 5AR isozyme, isoenzyme, which is primarily expressed in the prostate and hair follicles. By blocking the peripheral conversion of testosterone to DHT at the dermal level, it leads to a significant reduction in scalp and serum DHT levels by about 70% after a single dose. In turn, this reduces the binding of DHT to scalp androgen receptors, which reduces hair loss from the scalp. So we can see, again, the fact that finasteride jumps in, hijacks that 5-alpha reductase enzyme, and then that, that's responsible for converting testosterone into DHT. Now, it also can affect um, some other hormones, which I'll get to shortly. So why is finasteride actually risky to use? Well, by blocking 5-alpha reductase enzymes with finasteride, the biosynthesis of 5-alpha DHT is dramatically reduced, thus resulting in a state of androgen deficiency independent of circulating testosterone levels. The, this DHT deficiency poses major health risks 
with its physiological role in erectile physiology, sexual maturation, liver and kidney function, pancreatic beta cell function and survival, ocular function, prevention of eye disease, cardiovascular health, body composition, brain health, cognition, and mood. So we can see that you may think that it's specifically just going to focus on DHT in the prostate and, and, uh, and the hair follicles. But in fact, this reduction in um, 5 alpha DHT can actually lead to many other health associated side effects. So here are the health risks associated with long-term finasteride and tetasteride use. Um, and this, this, the study title was, it's time to sound the alarm. This treatment may result in development of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or NAFLD, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, dry eye disease, potential kidney dysfunction, among other metabolic dysfunctions. We suggest that long-term use of finasteride and dutasteride may be associated with health risks, including non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, dry eye disease, and potential kidney disease. So now, what is post-finasteride syndrome and what the heck is this all about? Well, the post-finasteride syndrome, possible etiological mechanisms and symptoms. Post-finasteride syndrome is a constellation of serious adverse side effects manifested in clinical symptoms that develop and persist in patients during and or after discontinuing finasteride treatment in men treated for hair loss or benign prosthetic hyperplasia. Basically, what this is, is that if a guy takes finasteride for like, let's say one, two, one week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is, and then he stops taking the medication, that individual will still experience side effects for many, many months after stopping the drug. Now, serious adverse side effects include persistent or irreversible sexual, neurological, physical, and mental side effects, such as overall sexual dysfunction, erectile dysfunction, loss of libido, depression, suicidal ideation, anxiety, panic attacks, insomnia, and even cognitive dysfunction. And if you don't believe me, if you don't think that post-finasteride syndrome or PFS is even real, just have a look on PubMed. You know, this study here titled Post-Finasteride Syndrome, a surmountable challenge for clinicians. Um, and they're looking at how that can affect neurosteroids, affects quality of life can contribute to, you know, all of these symptoms that I mentioned before, which is, you know, completely devastating. Now, one of the most horrific side effects that occurs in a, not all men that use finasteride, but I know a number of men that have, you know, complained about this side effect is literally their penis shrinking. Yeah, that's right. Their penis is not as, you know, when it becomes erect, it's not as big as it used to be. Well, this is true. This can actually happen. This is legitimate research, legitimate science. Again, it's not going to happen with every single man who uses finasteride, but it can happen in a in, in a small percentage of the population. Here we go. Research review. Alterations to penile and prostatic tissue associated with finasteride and dutasteride treatment. Numerous studies have shown that treatment with finasteride and dutasteride can change the size, tissue composition, and function of the penis and prostate. Changes in the penis linked to finasteride or dutasteride treatment include reduced size and weight, reduced erectile response, and decreased smooth muscle, increased collagen density, fibrosis, smaller cavities for blood to support erections, and decreases in, substance, in substances that support erectile function and androgen signaling. So this is terrible. In fact, 9 of 25, so 36% of subjects reported either increased descent of the testicles while the same number reported loss of penile length. So, you know, this study here was titled Penile Vascular Abnormalities in Young Men with Persistent Side Effects After Finasteride Use for the Treatment of Androgenic Alopecia. So, again, this is a devastating side effect that literally no doctors will educate not many doctors will tell you about these side effects. You know, this is legitimate science, but they're just neglecting these side effects. And, you know, as a young guy, let's say 19, 20, or even mid 20s, you know, going, entering the dating world, um, this can be, you know, really, really bad for his level of confidence. So here we can see effects of pre and post pubertal DHT treatment on penile length in 5 alpha reductase type 2 deficiency. In patients with a 5-alpha reductase type 2 enzyme deficiency, which is the same enzyme that is blocked with finasteride, 
There is a lack of DHT synthesis, which results in the manifestation of retarded penile growth or adult micropenis, in addition to other underdeveloped sexual characteristics. These patients are treated with exogenous DHT to then induce normal sexual maturation and penile growth. However, even exogenous DHT is unable to mimic the physiological production, showing that endogenous DHT production predominantly regulates penile growth rather than circulating T or DHT supplied from others or externally. Can finasteride make men suicidal? Well, here we go. The post finasteride syndrome, clinical manifestation of drug-induced epigenetics due to endocrine disruption. So what they're saying here is that finasteride affects genetic expression with downstream effects on neurosteroids, neurotransmitters, and their receptors. The inhibition of 5-alpha reductase blocks production of several neuroactive steroids, reduces healthy stress response, reduces allopregnenolone, lowers levels of type 1, 5-alpha reductase in the prefrontal cortex. Now, this disrupts the regulation of neuronal survival, differentiation, and growth, synaptic creation and function, glial differentiation, and myelin formation. This regulatory action implicates the control of mood, behavior, and even cognition. Additionally, finasteride-induced impairment of dopaminergic signaling, which may also contribute to uh, adverse mental health. Now, in 2023, the US FDA added suicidal ideation to the list of side effects of finasteride as a result of the robust studies finding significant increases in suicidality in individuals taking or had stopped taking finasteride. This 2021 meta-analysis of reports found that those treated with finasteride were 2.14 times more likely to be depressed. That is insane. Additionally, the risk of suicidal ideation or behavior was significantly greater with versus without finasteride. So 21% versus 14% and risk of sustained sexual dysfunction was 60%. Man, that is incredible. Yeah, these incredible, incredible statistics. Finasteride can increase the risk of sustained sexual dysfunction um, by upwards of 60%, which is super, super high. So what are men now doing to reverse uh, this PFS or post-finasteride syndrome? Well, there is a natural substance called PEA, pamatoyl and ethylamide, which is a natural compound for health management that's used for um, pain and uh, interacting with the PPAR alpha enzyme. But PEA is a natural substance in the brain that boosts neuroactive steroid hormones like allopregnenolone, which can backfill deficiencies caused by finasteride. Now, studies in mice suggest that PEA can raise brain allopregnenolone, easing anxiety and depression-like behaviors, but this effect is blocked by finasteride. Clinical trials with 6,000 subjects show that PEA safety with doses of 1,200 to 3,600 milligrams per day um, and about 30 milligrams per kilogram in children. Now, future allopregnenolone analogs may aid in post-finasteride syndrome treatment. So PEA may be something that men can use to um, assist or alleviate some of the side effects associated with the drug. So PEA does have some potential there. And I, I do know some clients that have actually, you know, some of my personal clients that have used finasteride and they've come to me, you know, wanting a, a stack and protocol to, to reverse some of the side effects and symptoms. And, and PEA has done a pretty good job at reversing like the anxiety and the issues with sexual functioning. Here we go, eight PFS success stories, cures and treatments. So this is a snapshot from, um, from Reddit. There's some people that have said, so HCG dosed at 250 IU Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I did this for six months straight, but at the 10th week or so, the improvements were weekly. I tried topical 5-AR um, inhibitors and I literally didn't feel any sort of horniness for six months. I was one of the lucky guys who recovered from test injections. I took a large amount of DHT or provirin for seven weeks at 200 milligrams per day to reduce receptor sensitivity to DHT. After stopping seven weeks later, when I ran out of his provirin, things felt off for a few weeks, but then after around two months, he got back to his pre-finasteride state. Now, and for, the far, and for the past six months, he says he feels great, his libido is back, uh, mental health issues are gone, ED is gone, and this is after having PFS constantly for 11 years. My life is finally back. Um, so obviously, this is not medical advice, but this is what people are doing to reverse some of the side effects. Another guy said, 
ran T-Bowl 250 milligrams for two months, increased dosages anywhere from 500 milligrams to 1000 milligrams, around eight months and I was pretty much recovered. On a side note, I've seen a few other people recover the same way, just bombarding their bodies with strong androgens. Um, so we can see there's a few people reporting, you know, even potentially DHT gel. So this guy said, I've been prescribed a 2.5% DHT gel that he supplied to the shoulders and forehead once a day. Now I can happily say that I no longer have any problems, strong erection all day and night, incredible. This guy said, so Cialis and Clomiphene and Anastrozole, that seemed to help, um, but you know that still didn't really you know, alleviate all the, the side effects and symptoms. So that's pretty much it from post finasteride syndrome. If you have personally suffered from side effects, let's get a discussion going down below. This is a serious topic that needs some urgent attention. Um, and if you've ever used things that have helped or you know helped you recover, leave a comment down below. That's it from me today, folks. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.